What's going on guys? I'm with the Moose and today we're on the All-Star break. Today is the Home Run Derby in this video and uh, also be some stats and whatnot, as standings, all that kind of stuff updated throughout this entire video. So stick around. It's going to be a good one. And we first up got the Home Run Derby with David Ortiz in the Derby for the first time in a few years. He's launching them in right field in Petco Park. The first round, Brandon Bell only hit four home runs. He's my opponent in the first round and Ortiz is laying him to work. He's letting him fly. And uh, Brandon Bell has pretty much no chance. Only four home runs. That's not a good enough performance against a great home run hitter like Ortiz. And uh, I'm not going to, you know, lie. I got to spoil it. Ortiz wins this round pretty easily. You guys have seen the home runs right here. I hit one to left even uh, on this one, which is a little surprising. Don't really, uh, you know, anticipate Ortiz hitting home runs to left. But we'll take it, and we love it. Uh, always got to like to see stuff like that. Now Ortiz, bang, right there. That's number five on the round. It wasn't too difficult. took just about a minute to get those five. And that is very nice. 479 on that one. A huge ding dong for David Ortiz. And um, that was pretty nice. So moving into the second round, Cole Calhoun hit 17 home runs. And you're thinking 17 home runs, damn. And then you're also thinking, Cole Calhoun, are you serious? Yeah, the guy's only hit 10 home runs all this season in uh, real life. And uh, apparently he hit 17 in uh, you know round two of the home run derby. So we got our work cut out for us. Started off well, though, with a home run. 456 to right center field. Got to love that. And then Ortiz, another one right here. He's down. He only has five right now, 45 seconds left. I'm kind of skipping around a little bit. That one was a shot, though. 493, seven off of a 500 spot. That would have been something else. He's up to nine now. Make it 10 on this one. This is his bonus time. If you hit a couple over 440 feet, you get a minute 30 bonus time in this. So we got a little bit of time left, but we pretty much have to, you know, get 100% home runs from now on and get them on line drives because if you hit them, you know, kind of popped up home runs like that one where, you know, I still hit it out, but it took maybe 5, 10 seconds for it to fly out of here, then it's going to take a lot longer. Now we ground out right there, or really line out, I should say. And, you know, we really just can't have that. We pretty much need to hit all home runs right here. This one's to deep right center field. That's going to get out of here, make it 12, 486, another moonshot for Ortiz. Only 19 seconds left, though, not looking good. And uh, sadly, they don't have the, you know, little bonus time you get, um, you know, in regulation. Because in regulation, if you keep hitting home runs with no time left, you'll actually, uh, you know, they'll let, they'll let you keep swinging until you make it out. Whereas in bonus time, which is what this is, uh, they don't have that. Which we do hit a home run here with, uh, you know, no time left, a buzzer beater, so to speak. Get it to 14, but we are still three shy. And Cole Calhoun advances to round number two. Good effort by David Ortiz. But in his final All-Star game and in his final home run derby, he comes up just a little bit short then, um, you know, it's no big deal. <laughs> Not a huge uh, thing, but uh, Edward Encarnacion does win it. And Encarnacion, a good friend of Ortiz, a possibility for next year for the Red Sox. Uh, you know, a lot of talk that Encarnacion could be the guy the Red Sox go after to fill the, you know, shoes of David Ortiz, given the fact that that DH spot has been huge for the Red Sox order for so long. Encarnacion could be that guy. But he wins the home run derby. Now we're going to take a look at some stats, standings, all that good stuff. Get you guys caught up on the league and where we stand at, uh, you know, pretty much the halfway point. So we are in first in our division, four and a half up on the Blue Jays. Yankees, eight out. Everyone else kind of, you know, not really in this. Orioles may be hanging in this, but, you know, overall, it's pretty much just us and the Blue Jays. Then the Royals and the Indians are tied in the NL, or the AL Central, I should say. And then the Astros are leading the Mariners by a game in the NL. Or, wow, I keep saying the NL. In the AL West, wild cards looking like the Blue Jays, Royals, Indians, a bunch of different teams in there. Then the NL East, we got the Nats up by a lot on the Mets. The NL Central, we got the Cubs up by half a game on the Cardinals. Everybody else nowhere even close. So you got to appreciate what they're doing out there. And then the Dodgers and Giants, of course, are the two good teams in the NL West. That's kind of like real life as well. Um, you know, at least most years, I should say. Um, so that is the look at the standings. It's pretty interesting. I think uh, we're in a good spot. We have a pretty solid lead, but we got to keep it up. Moving over some stats now. Billy Burns leading the league in batting average. Mookie Betts in 14th right there. That's our highest one at 295. Although we do have the highest team batting average since I have a lot of guys around the 295, 285 spot. Uh, it's pretty good. We keep scrolling through these quickly. Uh, home runs. David Ortiz is second in the league with 27. Very, very nice. Uh, also, something I did want to mention, I was going to show the All-Star game in this, but for some reason, I only got two All-Stars. Mookie Betts was an All-Star and Craig Kemmer was an All-Star. They both deserved it for sure. You guys can see here their, their, their stats and whatnot. I'll go through each player's stats on my entire team in a little bit, but they did not there, no one else made the All-Star team. David Ortiz didn't make it. Dude is hitting like 295 with 27 home runs and what was it, like 75 RBIs, something like that. And he didn't make it. Hanley Ramirez didn't make it, uh, although he is hurt, so he wouldn't have actually been able to play. 
there was a bunch of different guys that did not make the all-star team and it really just puzzled me as to why they didn't so that's why i didn't show the all-star game it would have just been kind of boring um and also for your reference the nl did win the all-star game so we will not have home field advantage when we get to the world series which is of course our prime goal we keep moving along here in the stats you guys can you know pause the video go back and whatever if you want to check them out but david price leading the league in strikeouts yeah it's absurd uh, 142 he's killing it now here's the stats for every individual player you guys already saw mookie a little bit 295 very solid dustin Madre not been too great lately 271 got to pick it up with him for sure not really hitting many home runs either xander bogart's also kind of struggling at the plate at least in terms of average been hitting more home runs and doubles lately which is nice ortiz has been killing it all year probably by my best player at least in my opinion him or mookie one of the two now, Lucro is hitting fifth now um, instead of Hanley because Hanley's out. want to keep that left-right matchup going. Uh, he's been okay since he came over, but really hasn't had much time. Shaw has been fantastic all year, as has Swihart. They've both been very nice, and Bradley has also been really good, uh, which is a nice, uh, pleasant surprise for us. Mankata only played in a few games. Not a big deal. Not really hitting all that well, but I don't expect him to be you know, lighting the world on fire. Now, Hannigan playing okay, but really doesn't play all that often. Same with Rutledge. Uh, you know, they've just been all right and really don't play that much. Brock Holt, been pretty good, but uh, will be playing a little bit less now. And Chris Young has been killing lefties, but does nothing against righties, so I got to make sure I play him against lefties. And I believe in my versus lefty lineup, he is in the lineup uh, every single time. Now, David Price, like I mentioned, leading the league in strikeouts, has a pretty good ERA, but could like or would like that to go down a little bit. Clay Buckholz has been very good all year, as has Andrew Kashner, a great pickup for us at the beginning of the season. Really like him. Eduardo Rodriguez came back in the rotation a week or two ago, and he has been phenomenal since I put him back in. And Rick Porcello, probably been our worst starter so far, but overall hasn't been too bad. So that is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like down below and let me know what you think we're going to do in the second half. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.